Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. Today is October 14th and we're doing AI a teensy bit of space and nonsense. Hope you're having a nice spooktober. I haven't put any spider webs on the desk. I need to do that. We need more spider webs. You're gonna have to collect more spiders. Okay. Let's just release spiders into the room and then at the end of the week, we'll see where they are. Yeah. They might not show up on camera. But they're webs. Oh, yeah. uh. Uh, so yes. AI, and this is poorly sorted, probably. It's just that kind of week. But first, this is a, a long running series of articles where AI is going to be able to tell everything about us about just, just by looking at us. AI, I oh, checked, no. it's, can predict heart disease. No, no, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, wait, we have to turn this off. Why did that change between? Because I closed the browser. Oh. Uh, you can turn the eye back on. Oh. Hey, oh. okay. AI eye checks can predict heart disease risk in less than a minute, study finds. So basically it just looks at your retina and what's going on with the blood vessels in the back of your retina. And it says, mm, I've seen those before. Because you got all those visible blood vessels in your eye. And the is like, uh, yeah, you're going to die soon. Great. Of all the parts of an eye exam, when they shine that like sliver of light into your eye, that's like the coolest part, I think. Okay. You know, like the air puff? I don't like the air puff. It uh, freaks me out. I've noticed that when you go there, they're like, hey, we can screen you for this that your insurance will pay for, or you can pay for $20 more, and we don't have to do that thing where your eyes go horribly dilated and you can't see for an hour, but it's $20. But you're going to pay it? Yeah. You're, okay, you can pay $20, or you can sit here for a couple hours. Yeah, pay $20 every time. And DeepMind, they are just destroying all games. If it's a game, DeepMind will destroy you at it. And what they've learned is to take complex problems and gamify them <laughs> and then feed it to DeepMind. DeepMind's game playing AI has beaten a 50 year old record in computer science. It has to do with matrix multiplication. How many steps does it take to multiply a matrix of numbers that's, you know, four by four in this case? And the AI was able to beat a German algorithm from 1969 by two moves. Will young data structures students still have to go through that class? Yes. That was a gatekeeper class. Yeah. That was a big gatekeeper. <laughs> we'll learn that those are now evil. Uh, when I went through the class, I had learned a new technique for doing matrix multiplication that was different than a fabulously ancient teacher was using. And she's like, wow, this is a really much better technique. Where did you learn this? And I was like, I, the internet? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never believe if there's this interconnected network with all human knowledge. <laughs> I was, I actually had the situation where I got one of my homework assignments kicked back because it was in 1920 resolution and he didn't have a monitor that could do that in those days. And it's like, bro, don't you want to keep up a little bit? You teach this. It's your job. These are incredible. And this is going to be so disruptive. Well, I don't think we've yet understood exactly how disruptive all of this is going to be. Meta's new text-to-video AI generator is like Dolly for video. I. How are we supposed to compete in the YouTube landscape with the <laughs> bear painting himself? There's so many of them, and uh, these text descriptions can get quite lengthy. They show in the next example because it's not just Meta that's doing it. Oh no! Oh, no you missed it because we added this one late. <laughs> Amazon scales back its scout delivery robot program. So in business, we talked about how Amazon is preparing for bad things. This also popped up as we were shooting the news. Uh, when they say scale back, they mean that basically everybody's been fired or reassigned. We also have another story about these robots, which just bear with us with the sword here. But this is where I was going to go. Google answers Meta's video generating AI with its own dubbed Imogen video. Imagine, imagine, Imogen, I don't know. Imogen. Yeah, why does everybody always ask for the astronaut riding the horse? Because it's adorable. Look how skinny that horse is. That horse, yeah, doesn't look quite right. <laughs> I, I like how the the it's a loop, but just as the the uh, you know thing starts to change, and you know what's really exciting too is that I don't think these images can be copyrighted. Now, here's the crazy thing about it is uh, they point out that this little video here, this one runs a lot longer than the other ones, and it's because the prompt for it is all of that. Wow. The AI is able to take all of that text and turn it into a video. And he's doing like camera shots and pans and stuff and zooms and it'll do it. Wow. It understands it. So what you're saying is I can take the Lord of the Rings screenplay, 
feed it to an AI and say every character needs to be played by Danny DeVito. We finally, today We've is done the day. It. October 7th, 2022. We finally, can, the loop is closed. Can we retire the joke now? <laughs> my my second favorite conspiracy theory after the Lord of the Rings show was actually supposed to be a Dragon Age script. The second favorite is that the whole script was written by an AI and not actual writers. <laughs> the, uh, you bowl did that. He, he wrote a movie to, to compete with Lord of the Rings and they just put the Dragon Age name on it. Uh. Yeah. yeah. It's famously terrible. Mm. But it's got big names in it. Yeah. Rings of Power is kind of... Uh... Well, oh man, we got paywall here so we won't be able to show you the pictures, but you really don't need a ton of pictures for this one because you've seen it before because this is just the son <laughs> of probably our favorite robot ever. Here. Flippy Jr. Robots are making french fries faster and better than humans. Mmm, this fry is delicious. It's because it was lovingly handcrafted by an AI that was obsessing over it at every step of its manufacture. Now, of course, this raises more of a question in terms of, you know, now that we're giving Flippy even more jobs, aren't we continuing to get rid of human jobs? <laughs> and it's Flippy Jr. Flippy 2, technically. Flippy Jr. He's, he thinks his dad is cringe. For real, for real. <laughs> But, uh, of course, they gave a quote and they're like, well, I, we've talked to some employees and they are super excited to not have to make fries anymore. <laughs> Do you think that we'll see, um, like, a personal home kitchen robot? Yeah, in the I next mean, 20 years? I could see, like, they'll sell you a whole suite of appliances with a, an arm that can slide around on rails. I think... The issue with that is that people's kitchens are all such weird dimensions that it would be difficult. I mean, if you're spending that much on a robot, remodeling new, kitchens. New construction uh, will demand. Yeah. A, certain layouts. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, how cool would it be, though, if you had, you know, an Amazon apron grocery, de grocery delivery service and, like, your meals were just all listed ahead of time and the robot was handling 80% of it. The robot was basically saying, you know prepare this thing in mix in container two, prepare this thing in container three. And that was something you did on Sunday night. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the robot just retrieved the appropriate container and put the thing together. And you had hot, fresh, healthy meals. After canning like salsa for two or three days this week, I would love a, a robot that could just chop peppers for me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Flippy could do that. Yeah, I bet he could. Yeah. What about just the, the little thing that you get and you pull the cord and it spins? I have like a, well, what I did after, the, after the first batch took me forever to chop all that. And then I, I remembered we had like a, I forget what the name of it is, but you like open it up and you put a pepper in it and you just. Is a food processor an option? They've also got the one you just slam with your hand and it spins. And it spins. I've never used that one. Those are cheap. You should get some of those. Uh -huh. Oh, well, we have the thing too. It would work. I should have thought of it before. I was like, wow, that would have saved me a lot of time on the first batch. I think what we've established here, Chris, that there's like 5,000 simpler inventions that you could have used other than a robotic arm. <laughs> no, I need a robotic arm to chop peppers for me when I make salsa. I, it's, it's, uh, I'm imagining something as exciting as when I discovered that I could make peanut butter in the food processor, because that is some damn fine peanut butter. They used to do that at the grocery store, the big one, Kroger. You could go over there and like grind your own peanut butter. They got rid of that machine during... The, the downside of the food processor peanut butter is it's very hard to clean. Yeah, but Kroger dealt with all that and you could just take your own container and get it. Not anymore. Thanks, pandemic. You know how I bet only eats fresh made, beautiful, organic peanut butter? Bruce Willis. Yeah. Bruce Willis denies selling his rights to his face. This is kind of a correction to what we said last week. Uh, you know, he said, or the the deep cake firm said, we've got the rights to, you know, Bruce Willis's face. And Bruce Willis says, no, that didn't happen. No, man. But the truth is probably going to be weird. But they did make a commercial and they claim, it seems like they changed their language a little bit and maybe just said that they didn't have the rights, but that he gave them permission. Mm. To do the commercial, probably, right? Not to just make whatever they want. His lawyer says Bruce still owns his likeness by default. I don't understand what that means. Can you can you not sell that? At least until he dies. Maybe he just licensed it for that commercial. Maybe somebody did it without his knowledge, mm -hmm. and they thought they'd get away with it, and then it started making headlines. Because mm. they were like, oh, this will run in Russia. Nobody will notice. Walgreens... Has their own version of Flippy. Oh, what would the pill version of Flippy be called? Pilly? That's not great. Poppy? <laughs> uh, Snorty? <laughs> None of them have the same ring. <laughs> anyway, they're getting more of them. 
Uh, Walgreens is expanding its use of prescription packing robots. So expect to be getting calls from the Walgreens pharmacy asking you to consolidate the day on which you pick up your prescription because yeah. it was it's, it will save them money. And we have a new milestone for Tesla customers. I would just like to point out that this is full self-driving, except it's not really full self-driving. Tesla now has 160,000 customers running its full self-driving beta. It's not really full self-driving. It's not even really full, and neither is it self-driving. It's some of those words, some of the time, individually. <laughs> it's partial driving assist. PDA. We sold you individual words. It's up to the consumer to put them together. Remember in the last couple of years, well, maybe not the last couple of years, but the last five to seven years, uh, IPOs were just on fire. We were getting those valuations that had no reflection in reality. Well, guess what? Reality is back and no one is going to the market. But finally, we have one. Intel's Mobileye files for its listing, uh, files for listing in first sign of thwarting a tech IPO market thawing IP uh, tech IPO market. It's so global warming. Google's self-driving. I uh, don't know. Intel's self-driving. I'm sorry. Yes. Intel. I would not, uh, I would not invest in that. So it seems, seems like I saw that in 2018 at Computex and it was pretty impressive then, but that was 2018. What year is it again? Well, I mean, we did have a, a blackout period for the world. Well, only two of those five years. And this is inevitable. I wonder if this is a rare thing that's that's going to happen. Uh, the bigger question is, is it worth enough for you to get your adult Happy Meal for thousands, tens of thousands of people to go without power for hours? <laughs> I would say that it's not. Queensland's Browns Plains. Queen, Queensland's Browns Plains. This is what Australia. I assume it's a subdivision yeah. or something. They're, they're without electricity after a drone food delivery crashes into power lines. If it were me... I would be having words with the power company. It's like, you mean to tell me one errant kite can take out power for this many? China would like to know your location. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well, that happens from time to time with Mylar balloons. Yeah. Uh. yeah. But uh, they did point out that when the workers got up there and retrieved it, food was still hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. That's the only thing I cared about. Fabulous. This one is a little bit old news at this point, but we just missed it because as Kristen points out, Elon Musk loves to do stuff on Friday. <laughs> Tesla CEO Elon Musk unveils prototype humanoid Optimus robot. Uh, a couple of them. One of them was more advanced than the other. He did own up to last year's demo, which was a guy in a suit, not a real robot. <laughs> so uh, Elon Musk has in mind that they're going to mass produce millions of these is what he said. And that they're going to be doing, you know, those menial things like carrying things around or chopping things like Krista. Uh. You know, like you could totally chop peppers. That's a thing. All those people who are cutting all their subscription services and buying only the Amazon brand stuff because they're broke are going to buy what, a $5,000 robot. Think how much easier it'll be for me to can goods. <laughs> <laughs> I have that chopping robot that I yeah. spent thousands of dollars on. You'll see. It'd be like, oh, wow. He filled up 20 jars. I didn't expect that there was that much vegetables. Where's Rue? Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, San Francisco was a big early adopter of all this self-driving stuff. They were one of the first to give out the permits and everything. Perhaps they're having a little regret. <laughs> SF to feds. The crews driverless cars keep blocking our roads. Sometimes they just congregate and for no apparent reason. That's because they're well, planning something. That's they, why. When they get confused, and this kind of makes sense, right? When you've got something as dangerous as a car... The moment the system is like, I don't know what's happening, it should just stop. Yeah. But that's what's happening a lot. It's it's like, I don't know. I just stop. In the middle of the road, turn everything off. It's like a high schooler just got their learner's permit. Yeah. So there's panic. <laughs> We're going to need another Timmy. Stop yelling at me, Mom. And I guess some good news, although this is not the kind of war that we have to worry about right at this moment. <laughs> but in the future, it could be terrible. Boston Dynamics pledges not to weaponize its robots. Don't worry. The clones that are being produced in <laughs> Russia and China will happily be weaponized. Which are like a tenth of the price. Yeah. I thought you meant my brain. I was like literal clones. Like, like human the Star clones. Wars clones? Yeah. I was thinking human clones. Well, because I just read an article earlier this week about how like uh, they're worried about Russia's like biotech thing. Because the Russian, not the Russian, the um, French president went over there 
to talk to him before all this kicked off and he wouldn't do a, a COVID test because he didn't want them to have his DNA. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, and it's oh, like, what a weird thing to have to think about. That's smart. Yeah. But the clone, that's what brought that up in my mind. Do you think that uh, Russia would go so far as to study and possibly lose control of extremely virulent diseases? I don't think any government would ever do that. Uh, it's probably true. Well, Tesla, while they are uh, touting their ability to study more full self-driving, because now they have all those beta testers, and that's what you are, and they have that supercomputer, and somehow they've decided to reduce the number of sensors. Tesla ditches ultrasonic sensors from all new cars as it bets on camera-only driver assistance. Uh, what if you're off-roading a Tesla and they get covered in mud? <laughs> that's, that's never a use case that will happen. Cars without the sensors won't have access to features like Park Assistant and Summon temporarily. So down here it says coming soon. What it means is not available <laughs> for the new models, not the old models. These are the new ones. I wonder if that raises the value of the old ones. Probably not because the battery pack already is crap, right? Oh, right, yeah. And we are uh, trying to fix our problem with schools. We're going to do that with mental health? No, 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 no. <laughs> Now we're going to install more invasive technology. Gun detection AI, the latest tech to make schools less safe. I read that as gum detection from back here. I, like, <laughs> I don't remember that. The janitor has had enough. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, There's a great quote. So they point out how this went catastrophically wrong. And they quoted the principal or the administrator of the school. And his quote was, on the first day of using this, this stuff, he said, I don't think we've ever had a more unsafe day at this school. <laughs> <laughs> Plus all the false positives, they they shake the students down, search them. Yeah, a lot of schools require like clear backpacks and stuff, probably to avoid the, the constant search down. But it's gonna make it, having a police state a lot easier lately. If every day you just randomly scream at students, it's like get on the floor, get on the floor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You're used to it. That Compliance. Point. That's what yeah. they want, right? You ever watch those uh, WEF talks? <laughs> they talk a lot about compliance. <laughs> And how it needs to be increased. <laughs> we should have sorted this one with the other one. This is uh, kind of like the Amazon delivery robots, but these are the companies that are already in effect on college campuses. And this journalist, Timothy B. Lee, did a great job of traveling from campus to campus and observing the robots. He found some really interesting stuff. The robot takeout revolution is closer than you think. I learned a lot ordering a donut and a muffin from delivery robots. So he ordered a muffin at first, I think, and it didn't exactly work out as planned. And then he found the robot and it was stuck or it needed to cross the road or something. And so finally some somebody showed up on a scooter to carry it across the road. Oh. And then he was able to retrieve his muffin. But then later on a different campus, he ordered a donut and that worked out just fine. Uh, one of the companies, I can't remember what the name it was, was far and away the better company at getting that done. But he also talked about just roaming around the college campuses for a while. And he said there was almost never time that there wasn't a robot inside. They were constantly delivering stuff. I did not have the money to go out or I guess to order food that often when I was in college. It was <laughs> I, a big deal if I got to go to Taco Bell. It's astonishing to me how poorly people are doing financially. And yet these kinds of companies survive. Like I think if you're getting any kind of government assistance, the moment you press deliver on DoorDash, it should all get canceled. Like, how can you justify that? That is a really high delivery D fee. Don't forget the uh, the story that we had about the person who was doing their, like their degree was like forest management or something. And they were able to rack up $480,000 of student loan debt. Cause you can't, you can't discharge that in bankruptcy. Like it's just, yeah, it's just there stays with you forever. With you. Wow. I have a friend who works in that student, and like student loans and they were going to do pre-law or pre-med or something. And then something uh, happened and they couldn't do it. And so it's like, I can go into but it. I bet there's also like that. Cause that's a federal program. Yeah. They probably give you more of a cushion to get through it. Yeah. So they're just, they're, they, uh, they must've gone to a really nice college. If Yale, yeah. Yale forestry. <laughs> yeah. Forestry. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's, I think the situation is, that if they don't have it paid off by the time that they're they retire it's just forgiven yeah usually <laughs> so my friend who works in forestry she works for the government like doing treat I mean, she doesn't have that level of debt nowhere near but like i think she is on some sort of forgiveness thing where like right. because teachers she works, get that yeah. yeah if you go into teaching they will forgive it 
Well, we're going to pour one out. F's in the chat, please, for a long-serving robot who is now lost to us. <laughs> ISRO confirms that the uh, the mission for the Mars orbital orbiter craft is over and non-recoverable. It was a uh, failure to launch. Oh. No, no, he's he's been orbiting oh, for he eight has? years. Yeah. Oh, but we can't use him? Oh. He's out of propellant, I think. Oh. He actually served longer than we expected. Oh, so. Oh, so it's, oh, so it's not a, oh, this isn't it's bad. a, oh. But it's sad to lose him. Yeah. Well, it's sad to lose him. I thought they were going to try to land it or something. And that's, and it was like, oh, we don't have enough fuel to land it or whatever. Well, he, I think he had some samples on board and there was a plan to uh, maybe try to get him, but uh, not going to be able to now. He takes those, those samples to the grave. Yeah. Nobody else. Well, he's them. orbiting. So uh -huh. there's well, no grave. He is the it, grave. It'll decay slowly. We learned from the. The Hubble thing. It's not going to be like in Wally, where there's a bunch of abandoned satellites in orbit. How wild would it be if he one day landed on one of the NASA robots? <laughs> no, he he sees that first advertising satellite and he just. <laughs> he also hates advertising. Well, we have a new company that could be delivering advertising satellites to our orbit. Firefly Aerospace, their Alpha rocket reaches orbit for the first time. That's a huge success. October one. They had a couple of CubeSats on there. Boy, you have to be, your your butt cheeks are clenching if it's the first launch and your CubeSat is on it. It was their second launch, the first successful one. Well, it's even worse. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've got the Hubble telescope and it's probably not got the best uh, self-esteem right now because everybody's all like, oh, James Webb is the best now. And I was mm. like, oh, guys, I've worked really hard for a long time. It seems like so old, Hubble's, but but their slavery will not come to an end if Elon <laughs> Musk has anything to do with it. NASA and SpaceX are studying the Hubble telescope boost, adding 15 to 20 years of life. Not just SpaceX. It's NASA sort of invited a bunch of companies, but I think NASA is giving SpaceX, what was it, just like a month or two months, something like that, to come up with a mission plan to strap a booster to it, to boost it into a much higher orbit, because it's taken this long but the satellite has moved closer to earth by like 60 miles over the last 20 years and so this would give it a booster so that it can boost itself back up to its original orbit and so it'll be good for another 15 or 20 years <laughs> that other rocket comes up to it and helps like just let me die <laughs> and here we have the gatekeeper college course now we talked about uh multiplying matrices earlier that was a data structures gate that not everybody got through. We also had the uh, recursion gate. That was yeah. a big one. Linked lists. <laughs> we lost a lot of people with linked lists. And pass by reference, surprisingly enough. Yeah. Pass by reference would really cut you down. If you went through this computer science program, you would see the classes got smaller and smaller. <laughs> In the medical world, that's organic chemistry. But is that evil? <laughs> Did a New York University professor get fired because students hate organic chemistry? Apparently, yes. Yes. yes, the answer is <laughs> yes, he did. So he was far and away known as the toughest. And this is a guy who had incredible credentials. He had written hundreds of papers and he had worked at another university that was much more prestigious. Do you remember which one it was? Harvard, maybe. And uh, this was just kind of like his retirement. He was just like, yeah, I'll teach on my spare time and everything. But he was a ball buster. <laughs> and these kids, the students got together and they were like, no, we hate him. And we think that this is discriminatory for whatever reason. <laughs> We're too stupid. That's, yeah, that's kind of how it feels, right? Like, and so he's gone. That's, uh, I had a professor like that. We, most of the freshman experience for art education, at least in my program, was kind of a washout course because it was very like, you need to do 100 sketches by tomorrow, have them on my desk. And some of our professors were like that too. And, and the university was gunning to get them out. Wow. Because they wanted people to just pump out those degrees. We had a little bit of that with one of our guys that they were claiming was uh, against women. Mm. I didn't have anything like that. It was literally just like, you're not, you're being too, you know, exclusive. You know, you should have, make the art program just whatever so that way people can get their degree and pay us money. We actually had a little, like, you know, we didn't actually bet, but we would give each other looks and be like, oh, this is definitely one when a a girl would come in like especially if she had uh greek letters on her shirt mm. i'd be like she's in the wrong room uh, <laughs> and she would walk in and she'd look around and she would look at a thing and she'd look at the wall and then she would walk right back out 
Uh, the the design program I was in, it was almost exactly 50-50 men and women. So Yeah, the computer science is way different than that. Yeah. Well, I worked with the computer science department when I was in college, and yeah, it was me and one other girl. There was a girl in our computer science department, and she was like, you know, that sort of, she looked like she could be in a sorority. You know, yeah. She was that, and she was very bubbly and like upbeat. And uh, I was talking to her one day, and I was like, you know, it can be- <laughs> Computer science is kind of a weird choice. And she was like, oh, no, I'm in education, but my advisor convinced me to take these classes. Oh, <laughs> well, how? So she minored in it. I guess. Huh. Wow. Uh, did for we, her. Did we ever figure out how to pronounce this? Is it? Neom? Neom. Neom. I like to say it like that. It's funnier. But, uh, yeah, a city in the desert that will be uh, built in the face of God. <laughs> this is near the Tower of Babel. It was, yeah, it was never meant to be. But they're not satisfied with just building this obelisk in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Think the affront that is Phoenix times a thousand. Yeah. Because <laughs> how could you take that further? How about adding winter sports to the desert? <laughs> Saudi Arabia win bid to host the 2029 Asian Winter Games in d- at Desert Mega City. <laughs> was it? Was it gonna? So I thought it wasn't. It wasn't Nyom. It was. There's another one by the same developer. I thought it was in a different location. Maybe I'm wrong. Mountain Resort and 500 billion Neon Project will host event. I could have sworn it was a different city. Maybe Trojena will be a year round destination for winter sports. This is going to be a thing inside the city. Oh, I thought it was like a separate location by the same developer. You need to register to keep reading. But uh, Uh. they they mentioned that this is not just going to be for the games. This is going to be an exciting destination all year round. How do you get to it? Do you take the the train in the line? I think they're going to build it up like right next to it going to be you know when the oceans rise and you know the the nuclear radiations everywhere it's going to be difficult to have winter games yeah Hmm. could be but since you're already doing it in the desert i mean and one of the things about it is uh you know when they build these super cities and these new state-of-the-art things these are still you know i mean they're they're religious governments yeah these are theocrats and they conservative have, places. They have some really weird rules that are going to conflict with bringing in tourism. So in that case, I'll just ignore them. I'll call free Saudi Arabia plans champagne and wine bars at Neom. It's going to be a Tony Beach Resort. What the heck is that? I love this picture where it's like very obviously Photoshop people in this bar. <laughs> this might be an AI image where they just gave it a text prompt of... That'd be interesting. Isn't it? People in a futuristic bar in a non-existent city. Isn't it wild that here in America, where we're majority Caucasian, all of our advertising is non-Caucasian people. (laughs) But in Neom, where they're not majority Caucasian, Uh, all the people in their advertising are Caucasian. (laughs) Also, I thought it was funny. The woman in this advertisement doesn't have her hair covered and she's wearing like a a shorter skirt. Mm. She should be on the ground being beaten. (laughs) Uh, Krista, what is the most opulent thing you've ever fed Rue? I mean, sometimes she gets like table scraps. So probably stuff that we mm, eat. Wow, that doesn't sound very uh, expensive or exciting, does it? No. <laughs> uh, on her adoption day, we get her an elk horn. And those oh. are usually kind of expensive. They're like 15, 20 bucks. Mm, but that's considerably less than 75. I've, yes. I've got an answer that's more than 75. Oh, my mom's cat's thyroid medicine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's not quite the same thing. Well, you should take root of this, Krista, because how great would that be? San Francisco now has a fine dining restaurant for dogs with $75 tasting menu. I think you can get like the giant boat platter at the local sushi place for $75. <laughs> Got it. My cats would love that. Yeah. Actually, oh. I don't know that they would. One time I got the. The dried tuna treat? They didn't like it. Oh, Cricket will eat anything. So what Cricket does is like, he'll watch Rue, and if Rue's interested in it, then he wants it. So this guy was a chef, and he was frustrated with that job, so he became a dog walker or a dog sitter. And he started using his chef skills to make exciting dog foods. And I guess it just caught on. I love Rue, but not enough to spend this much on a gourmet meal for her. That's a, that's more than what I spent to get her groomed this week. Here's my thinking about it. Like, I don't think my cats would appreciate it on that level. And if they did, then they would just want that all the time. 
Yeah. Anytime we escalate playtime or pet time or whatever, that's the new normal. Yeah, then they get upset. Right. So. Yeah, I let, I let Cricket drink a little bit of uh, milk in a bowl the other night. And now he just wants that. Like, as soon as you pull a bowl out of the cabinet, he starts meow. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, we're not doing that all the time. If you do too much of that, you'll get some bad poops. No, I, was, I mean, I just let him taste it. And he, he like took a little sip and then it was like, yeah. like a little helicopter. I made the mistake of giving my cats, you know, if you make a frozen pizza, there's always like the cheese debris. Oh yeah. And now every time a frozen pizza comes out of the yeah. freezer, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it's cheese time. <laughs> well, this is an interesting argument. I mean, I guess artistic expression does have to win out here, right? However, I got a little bit more insight after we... California restricts use of rap lyrics in criminal trials after Governor Newsom signs bill. So the, the article makes it sound like, oh, this is for free expression. But really, uh, if somebody says something as a lyric, it, does it have a basis in reality or is it fictional? This is How is this different than Stephen King writing about murder? Remember the woman who wrote about killing her husband? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Killed it was her like, husband. Uh, she really did kill her husband. I think they used that in the trial. Now, I've been watching the interrogations, a murder interrogation involving the ATK gang. Mm. And one of them, Kesu, I think is his name. Keso. While he lawyered up, he was smart. He was the only one of them that lawyered up. A smart man, Keso. But while he was sitting there, while they were just letting him, leaving him in the cold room, he was out loud writing a song about being in the murder investigation. Mm. Oh. So it was real. He's also famous for writing about or having songs that are based on what he claims is reality. Things he's experienced. It could also be part of his character though. Cause remember the rapper that was bankrupt and the judge asked him why he was photographing himself laying on a bed of money. And it's like, Oh, that wasn't real. Oh, that was 50 cent. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> he claimed that. That was the 50 cent was a different personality than Curtis, whatever his name is. Hulk, Hogan, stage also, persona. Hulk Hogan also used that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm, I don't know. Snoop had a great hit with murder was the case. That was real. Yeah. He actually had murder charges. Got and now him. he's doing collaborations with Martha Stewart, which is, I saw a great clip. Apparently he does a lot of uh, game shows. He just launched a YouTube channel for kids. Uh, and he was doing uh spin the wheel wheel of fortune and the the clue or the the word was baking brownies <laughs> obviously but he guessed baking onions because he's bad at it and they were like snoop it's baking brownies he just hung his head and he's like martha's gonna be pissed <laughs> <laughs> and of all the ones for him to get you would think yeah <laughs> well you can't get brownies at taco bell but you can get breakfast now However, when their breakfast came out, it was elaborate and a little bit hipster. <laughs> Seems like maybe people weren't wanting that for breakfast. Taco Bell is apologizing for its breakfast menu by having a bunch of ads that are making fun of itself for having such an elaborate breakfast menu. The executive said, well, it turns out people just want eggs for breakfast. We had this waffle egg taco concoction and no one wanted that. Breakfast foods are usually fairly simple. Yeah. What's your number one fast food breakfast item? Oh, Hardee's. Biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if I would choose Hardee's. I would pick biscuits and gravy. I don't know if I'd go with Hardee's. Where else is it? McDonald's Biscuit is world. too salty, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, Hardee's is pretty salty, too. Yeah, maybe been, maybe Hardee's is the best one. Yeah. It depends on how hard they've hit the biscuits. The, the saltiness really, I think, comes from the butter. And so if you get a fresh set of biscuits where they've only buttered it like four or five times, it's fine. But to keep the biscuits fresh, they constantly refresh the butter. And that's when you get into like, oh, this is just too salty. I can't eat it. That's disappointing. When you get, you break down and you get some fast food and then it's super salty and you're like, oh. Yeah. And now am I going to throw this away and throw away money? Yeah. Or no, gonna, you're going to eat it and you're going to ruin yeah. your arteries. Right. I'm just going to throw away health. I've never tried it, but I have, uh, I have been tempted sometimes where it's like this gravy is so insane. I'm tempted to throw it into a pot, add some more flour <laughs> and some more milk and see if I can dilute it, dilute a little. it back into something sane. We need to sell unsalted gravy for just for, you know, like yeah. evening out your fast food. All the, that little bubby child guy who makes the comics about people from around here. One of them that's my favorite is like, my papa has been sitting at the Hardee's for 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's in our town. Every town had that. We didn't have Hardee's, so it was Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is, it's both actually. And you know how for a while 
Dairy Queen had those, um, you could collect like the little stickers off of the cups and the, the fries and stuff. And then you, if you could collected enough of them, you could get free stuff. My mom went into her purse and she, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was all the time. They could have free ice cream for the rest of their lives. Oh, uh, this is, uh, I mean, you know, like I just wanted to point out because we crossed a milestone this week. But it took a very short amount of time. <laughs> so in the spring, we rolled over to 30. And now, here we are, 31. 31 trillion dollars. Bum, 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 <laughs> I think we pay an average of like 3 to 5% per annum on that debt. Do that math real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and... If these interest rates stay up going forward, it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> so much worse. Are we in the too hot section? We literally oh. do oh. not have enough skilled workforce to add that much value to the economy. You think this is too hot? I, I think this is very... I, didn't, I wasn't sure if we were starting to transition into it. I think YouTube will laud this. Yeah. This yeah. is a popular, but here's the problem. Um, in terms of federal charges... No federal prosecutor will charge you with this. Oh, it, it, one step farther than that, there is no one currently in federal prison that this affects. So this is a this is the biggest nothing burger in the history of nothing burgers. This is a pure election manipulation. Biden pardons all federal simple marijuana possession offenses. So what this does not fix, there's nobody currently in any federal jail anywhere that this would free, but. This does maybe for a few people uh, take it off your record because if you apply for a job, it shows up on a background check, blah, blah, blah. So if you have federal charges from a long time ago, you can get those expunged now, but it doesn't help you with state charges, which, is, which will still show up. I think the other thing with that too was, um, weren't they going to reschedule? Not with this. He recommended that we explore rescheduling. Oh, but it's it. not actually been no. done. Okay. Right. Uh, this does affect some more people from like DC than anywhere because, because DC is the only place yeah. where you could have gotten because it is everything in DC is federal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the whole rescheduling thing, I, we continue to live in a world where we consider that heroin has some medical value and marijuana has none. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, what a, what an exciting time of I year. I saw this article. I was like, we got to add it. Every year we look at these guys. Uh, usually we do it afterwards, but I like seeing the contenders. Yeah, same. It's important. <laughs> it's Fat Bear Week. Here are the contenders. We'll only show you like the one or two. There's, Fat Bear there's, Bodies. There's like 12. 747. I think he won in one of the prior years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. I think he's been a four-year winner. Here's 435 Holly. Mm. She's got a light color to her. Gazer or Grazer. God, he is what a, a name. Isn't he? Uh, Divot. That's a good name for a bear. Oh, wow. This one does not named yet. This is just 856. He's pretty husky. He's big. This one's wounded. <gasps> I think that's where they tagged him or something. No, they oh, mentioned in the article. They shaved him? Well, this is a, a visible wound. Wow. He's taking a wound. Probably some mating stuff. <laughs> this one is weirdly proportioned. <laughs> that's 901. 480. Otis. Otis, doesn't know Otis is name. a good name for a bear. Yeah. Chunk. <laughs> uh, oh, he's kind of like short legged. This is a young one. This is his first year. Oh, first you know, year, fat bear. He probably won't make it, but yeah. he's excited to be included. You know, he's in training. He's just happy to be there. Yeah. One from some of the other bears. This one's also a young bear. This well, is one sixty four, and uh, three thirty five. Oh yeah, he's not gonna make it. This yeah, these guys are Holly's daughter. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so we have a dynasty. Fat Bear Dynasty. <laughs> I'd watch that Discovery Channel show. Uh, here's a local story oh. that shows that here in you know little sleepy Kentucky, we're just now getting to the uh, drug hell. Did, did Did you see we got almost a half a billion dollars, and we don't know what to do with the money from the opioid settlement? Oh, All from uh, yeah. Stackler. Yeah. Wow. We're just predisposed. And, gonna, and it's like, we it. don't, we don't even know how to spend it. Well, they're going to spend it on stuff like this. which is just stupid. Narcan vending machine in Kentucky empty a day after being installed. This was free. This is, you could go up to it and just say, I need this. This will save your life. If you're overdosing on opioids. I thought an EMT had to. Nope. Oh, so, uh, somebody in the comments pointed out, I mean, you know, we're trusting the comments here, but 
Uh, it's not like a, a, a plunger pressurized injector. Apparently, it's nasal. Mm. Oh. So I guess it would be pretty easy to apply that, especially if you're unconscious. Even the even the the other applicator ones, like you have, they have those. Like Walmart has those in case someone is ODing in Walmart around here. That's how bad that is. I know most of the health departments like have that on available, but I didn't know that they'd started doing it in vending machines. That's like right. the dark side of the Japanese vending machines. Well, I wonder if those have any resale value. Probably. So has somebody just emptied it out and you're trying I I feel like if you are in the throes of drug addiction that badly, you don't have the foresight nor the cash to think, I'm gonna grab some Narcan while I also grab my heroin. But if you could sell it on eBay to get uh, more heroin uh, you would definitely be motivated to do that one of the stories linked to in that other in the story that you just had was three people were, were arrested after somebody the fourth person od'd and they just sat them out by the dumpster and then they went back inside to return to the drugs that's one of those deals where like you're already committing a felony so anything that happens during the commission of that felony everybody's responsible for yeah i have some stories i can tell that won't you know where i think we should apply that law police forces <laughs> i agree that's never gonna happen all right so we have a, a wild thing that's gonna happen here i'm gonna pass the uh 10 key of authority over to krista oh because we have a new segment that is krista's doom scroll oh yeah so, well, it's not, oh, i don't do it every week but this week was just especially good i don't know what, what key is, do I need is to this going on five is, is this going on the main thing or no not? and actually i'm gonna stop the video just to make sure and uh, so if you are part of the cult of engagement over on Patreon and Floatplan, you will get extra oh, no. content. Oh, no, don't hit it yet, Krista. I'm hitting it again. It's Five and zero. Oh, don't look. You didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the doom scroll. It's fine. So, yeah, this will. This is all the uh, the terror that Krista has collated throughout the week. Please join us on Patreon and Floatplan and explore it with us. Right. Thank you. Or, or, you know, buy some T-shirts for something on store.level1text.com or KVMs or keyboard conversion kits, whatever your poison is. We appreciate it. For SW, we'll see you next week unless you join us on Patreon. <laughs> unless there's nuclear Armageddon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.